Shurima, your emperor has returned. Arise! I'm going to show you everything it takes to dominate games and gain ELO with Azir. Welcome to this ultimate Azir guide. It has everything you need, tips and tricks for all abilities, combos to one-shot and crush team fights, gameplay strategies at all stages of the game, and much more. As long as you follow everything in this guide, you will achieve your goal this season with Azir. Whether you're a newer player aiming to get out of Iron 4 or grinding to get Diamond for the first time. After testing items and runes from the best pro and solo queue players, I've put as much information in this guide to help you emulate their builds and gameplay. I'm Zeus, let's get straight into this guide and I'll show you how to dominate with the Emperor of Shurima, Azir. Let's quickly cover Azir's abilities and then after each one, I'll show you tips and tricks you can use in your next game to give you an advantage. His passive, Shurima's Legacy. Azir creates a tower, Disk of the Sun, on any destroyed tower outside the enemy base. Simply click the area and a tower will be constructed over 5 seconds. It pretty much has the same stats as a normal tower with some AP scaling. Its HP will decay over 1 minute. It will even gain gold and XP on any enemy it kills for you. It loses 100 armor while Azir is dead or too far away. We'll be using this passive to siege with or without your team. Use it to bait enemies. If they engage and commit to a fight under your tower, you'll have a lot of extra damage. It can be a great tool to split push. Anytime enemies try to gank you, use your tower for extra damage. We'll be using items to survive and increase the bait potential, which I'll cover later. Before we cover Q, let's first go over his W, Arise. Azir creates a soldier in the target area. He can then attack enemies within range by auto attacking. These soldiers cannot be targeted and they last 10 seconds. It also comes with a passive, which increases Azir's attack speed and stocks up to two sand soldiers. Use it to attack enemies further away, past the cast range. Sometimes you can even use one enemy to hit another enemy out of the soldier range. It does AOE damage in a line, so aim it to hit as many enemies as possible when they are bunched up. Use it over walls to extend the range and provide vision in brushes or fog of war. It's great to poke and harass enemies under tower. However, if the soldiers are within the tower laser range, they will last half as long. You'll know this when they have an exclamation mark above their heads. It's great for wave clear as it has a low mana cost and does AOE damage. Your attack speed will be doubled if you summon a third sand soldier. This is easier to obtain as you gain ability haste and mana with items and levels. If your soldiers are seen by enemies, then you will be revealed. Be aware of this so you don't get caught out. Simply move out of range so soldiers disappear early, if you don't want to be seen. Soldiers auto attacks apply spell effects like Rylize and Leandris, but not on hit effects like Red Buff. Now coming back to his Q. Conquering Sands allows Azir to reposition all his Sand soldiers, damaging and slowing all enemies they pass through. Use this to poke enemies from far away with the amazing range. Another great wave clear tool, making sure to hit as many minions as possible. Aim to hit champions too when they're all bunched up. It becomes a great vision tool as you can check brushes and fog of war from an even safer range. If enemies are hit by more than one soldier, they will be slowed a lot more, increasing per soldier. Keep in mind it becomes easier for the enemy to dodge the longer the soldiers have to travel. For reliable damage, you want to W close to an enemy, auto attack, then instantly Q and auto attack again. More on this in combos. His E, shifting sands, Azir will dash through the selected sand soldier, gaining a shield and damaging all enemies he passes through. His dash will be interrupted if he hits an enemy champion and gain a charge of a rise. His E damage will only apply to the first enemy hit. This becomes your main gap close, escape, and playmaking tool. Use it over walls for a high chance to chase and escape. You can even dash over two or more walls in specific areas of the map, mostly around thin walls and narrow areas with multiple walls. Azir can cast other spells during his dash, which opens up potential to perform multiple combos like the Sharima Shuffle, which I'll cover later in more detail. Use it to get to lane faster. W over the Nexus, E then Q to increase the distance. You'll have E up when you arrive in lane. 
E has a long cooldown, so only use it for important situations early laning, like escaping a gank or going for a kill. Have it ready to dodge any important enemy skills. Even if you get hit by the spell, your shield will negate some damage. And finally, his ultimate, Emperor's Divide, sends a wall of soldiers in front of Azir, damaging and knocking back all enemies. The wall stays in place for 5 seconds, acting as terrain. Enemies will not be able to walk through it, but your teammates can. It grants sight of this area surrounding the wall. This is an amazing peel tool, pushing any threats away from Azir. It even covers the area slightly behind Azir, making it easier to land. The knockback can knock enemies over thinner walls. It can be used aggressively for the damage and potential to sweep enemies into your team. We'll cover this in combos. The number of soldiers increases from 6, 7, then 8 at level 16, making it an even bigger threat. Zone enemies out of a fight by using it in tight areas of the jungle. Enemies without a dash or blink won't be able to get through, and other enemies will be forced to use their mobility abilities early in a fight. As for ability order, you want to max Q first. It will decrease the cooldown and increase the damage, making it essential to poke enemies in lane and generally throughout the game. You want to max W second specifically for the increase in attack speed you gain per level. With more attack speed, Azir's soldiers have potential to shred anything in range. W will lower the soldier recharge cooldown. You want to max E last. There are some rare cases you want to max E second as it increases the shield strength. For getting targeted early, you can max E second, just make sure your team has damage covered. And you'll want to max ultimate whenever it's up, which is level 6, 11 and 16. At level 1 you'll only have access to W, making his invades pretty weak, unless enemies stand on your soldier the whole time and you can activate multiple soldiers. Q is always best at level 2, unless you're in a rare situation where you need to escape, then take E for the dash. Continue maxing Q after level 3. When it comes to major runes for Azir, things get a little interesting to say the least, as there are over 4 major runes taken. Let's first go over the 4 main runes, which are taken by the highest rank Azir mains, then I'll cover 3 other choices. Conqueror, the most popular at the moment, does well in extended trades and fights. With 12 stacks, Azir will even heal 9% of damage dealt. This is optimal for most situations, as Azir's kit is best utilized when he's able to output damage through his soldier's auto attacks. He still does plenty of damage with his Q, E and ultimate, but his soldiers are the key to success. A very important part worth noting is that even though Azir is a ranged champion, Conqueror counts his soldier's auto attacks as melee, so every auto attack with soldiers counts as two Conqueror stacks. And for clarity, if two or more soldiers hit two targets or more, it will still only count as two Conqueror stacks in total. Electrocute is great for a quick burst of damage in short trades. With a W auto attack, Q auto attack, you'll quickly proc Electrocute. Against squishy mobile champs that won't sit there taking auto attacks from your soldiers, this is a solid choice. Summon Airy is best taken for constant harass, mostly in lane. It has high potential to take advantage of weaker laners early game against champs like Cassidy and Priest 6. It is better than Electrocute if you're able to constantly proc it because of the much lower cooldown. Arcane Comment is best against very long range champions, for example Zerath, where you aren't able to capitalize with the 3 previous runes. With a single Q poke, you can deal extra damage to the slowed long range immobile champion. Just for clarity, every single auto attack from his soldiers on every single enemy champion reduces the cooldown of Arcane Comment. The next 3 major runes are far less popular, but can still be viable. Lethal Tempo is another option from the Precision Tree, focused on increasing Azir's attack speed, increasing per stack. It scales well and is best taken against immobile champs who will stay within your soldier range for a longer time. However, the second part of Lethal Tempo, which increases attack range, will not be applied to your soldier's attack range. Hail of Blade synergizes well with Azir's kit as his soldiers will activate the three faster auto attacks. However, it does not output more damage than Conqueror over extended fights especially those important team fights and skirmishes, since it has a cooldown. In terms of how it compares to Electrocute, it does slightly more damage within the same time if you can auto-attack enemies, 
Against mobile champs, it won't always be possible, so Electrocute is slightly more reliable since it can be activated off abilities. Again, Hail of Blades and Electrocute are very close in damage and both great for quick trades. First Strike has potential to be the most effective rune if Fazir is able to start fights, usually champions you outrange. It scales well, rewarding you with more damage and gold. Again, if you can't consistently get the first hit on the enemy, this becomes useless. So how to know which is the best rune? To simplify everything, if you're not sure, stick to the first four runes mentioned. For most games, you'll have some enemy tanks and a few immobile squishies to deal with, so take Conqueror. If you want pressure against a squishy mobile champion, say Zed, take Electrocute. If you want to pressure a vulnerable champion early on, say Kassadin, pick Summon Airy. If you are simply outranged in your matchup, take Arcane Comment. Now these aren't all the reasons, but they cover most situations. Over time, you'll feel what's best. Minor Roots If you've chosen Conqueror or Lethal Tempo, you want to take Presence of Mind for the mana sustained throughout the game, and gain mana after any takedown. Legend Alacrity for the increased attack speed, which is critical for Azir's kit. Finally, pick up Coup de Gras for greater damage on lower HP targets, or cut down if there's three or more tanks to deal with. From Domination, so Electrocute and Hail of Blades, pick up Cheap Shot for extra damage or Taste of Blood for extra sustain. Eyeball Collection is usually the best default option for some extra damage per takedown, but if you want some vision control, go with Zombie Ward or Ghost Poro. Finally, Treasure Hunter against lanes you'll dominate. Ingenious Hunter for other cases, and even Ultimate Hunter is slightly viable if you expect lots of teamfights and skirmishes, as you want your ultimate up faster. From Sorcery, take Mana Flow Ban for the important sustain, making sure to Q Poke or W Ord attack whenever it's off cooldown early game. Transcendence for the ability haste and snowball potential at level 11 on takedowns, and finally either Scorch for early lane pressure or Gathering Storm for the solid late game guarantee. If you've taken First Strike, pick Magical Footwear or Perfect Timing. Biscuit Delivery as a second minor rune, and finally Cosmic Insight for the haste. As for second page options, you can pick any combinations of the previously mentioned runes. Here are a few popular and optimal combinations. From Domination, Cheap Shot, then either Ingenious Hunter, Treasure Hunter, or Ultimate Hunter. From Precision, Presence of Mind for Mana, and Legend Alacrity for Attack Speed. From Sorcery, Transcendence with either Mana Flow Ban, Gathering Storm for Late Game, or Scorch for Early Pressure. Inspiration, Biscuit Delivery for some Sustain Early and Cosmic Insight. Resolve is another option to consider. If you need some anti-burst help, pick up Bone Plating. Take Overgrowth for some extra HP and regen throughout the game. All other Resolve runes aren't effective on Azir. As for Shards, you'll want Attack Speed first, which synergizes amazing with Azir's playstyle then Adaptive as the second shard. The final shard should be taken to counter your laner or even the enemy jungler. Armor for AD champs, MR for AP champs. Items Some starting options. Doran's Ring plus 2 HP pots. The most common start providing most of your early game needs. Corrupting Potion. Safer with more sustain and potential to be more optimal if you trade during the burn passive. Tier of the Goddess a rare but viable start if you plan to scale into Seraph's Embrace later on. You can still purchase Doran's Ring or Corrupting Potion first if you want a stronger laning start and then just purchase the tier later on. First back options and early components. Lost Chapter. This is your first main goal, aiming to have 1,300 gold. Most mana issues will be over and you'll be closer to finishing off your mythic item. Doran's Ring. You can purchase one of these if you start a Corrupting Potion. Just say you need more sustaining lane. Just don't buy more than one. Dark Seal, a cheap buy that can help you snowball with takedowns. Stopwatch, this can be great for game changing plays or fights, but only if you plan to get Zonya's Hourglass later on. Mythics, Luden's Tempest. With an AP power spike, mana and a splash damage passive, it has everything Azir needs for most situations. The magic penetration comes in handy too, as it's optimal for your soldier damage. This is one very important point noting with Luden's Tempest. Each soldier's auto attacks will reduce the cooldown of Luden's Splash passive. If one soldier hits three champions, it will reduce by half a second each champion, so that's 1.5 seconds in total. If three soldiers hit three champions, it will be reduced by a total of three seconds. This means you can proc Luden's Tempest so many times in a fight, especially late game, 
when you have multiple soldiers up. Leandria's Anguish The percentage HP damage is important against tankier teams. You'll shred any enemy stacking HP. The ability Haste Passive helps later on, as you'll be able to arise and have more soldiers ready, again helping you shred tanks. Crown of the Shuttered Queen The Anti-Burst Assassin item This might be necessary against multiple threats. If you feel you'll be one shot before a fight, or your team lacks any peel, pick this up. Just be aware your damage is lowered compared to the previous two mythics. Also, you can make up for defense with legendary choices. Don't always consider this as the only way to survive threats, as you can always take defensive runes and purchase a Zonya's Hourglass. Rod of Ages, a stat-filled item with a movement speed passive. Although not favorable at the moment, it has potential to be viable in Azir if it gets buffed. I'll leave it here in case of a future buff. Just check the comments below to see if there's any updates. Legendary Items Magi Soul Stealer, the cheapest legendary item in the game with potential to snowball, just make sure you've got some stacks on Dark Seal already and there's a low chance of dying. Zonya's Hourglass, an amazing playmaking and survivability item against certain burst threats. Makes for some great creative plays using your Sun Disk passive. Shadow Flame, currently a strong item and the magic penetration synergizes well with these soldiers' auto attacks. Worth buying second if enemies have plenty of shields. Consider the HP you gain from this if you need something with survivability. Nash's Tooth. Amplify your attack speed and AP. You'll now have potential to output damage to enemies with regular autos too. Just for clarity, your soldiers do not apply the Nash's Tooth on hit damage, but the stats are useful for Azir. Rabbit onto Death Cap. The biggest AP power spike. Since it scales with total AP, this is best as your fourth item onwards. Void Staff. When enemies start buying MR, make this a priority. Archangel Staff. If you've picked up Tear, you'll want to complete this item, which transforms into Seraph's Embrace at 360 stacks. The shield may help you survive clutch situations, but it will take time to scale compared to all the other legendary items mentioned. Rylai's Crystal Scepter. A great slow tool, keeping enemies within your soldier range for longer. A single auto attack from soldiers will apply the slow. Demonic Embrace. Against an extra tanky team comp, you'll need some extra HP damage. Synergizes well with all the HP items mentioned. Morella Nomicon, a must buy against heavy healing team comps. Just don't get this if your support has Chemtech Putrefire. Banshee's Veil, a solid defensive option against any CC threats. Horizon Focus, it's technically viable because Azir uses all of the stats, but Shadow Flame is better at the moment. Cosmic Drive, the extra movement and increased AP after three attacks or abilities helps with kiting some team comps. Probably the last viable item on Azir. Lichbane. You don't ever want to buy this item on Azir since his soldiers do not apply the enhanced auto attacks. However, if you've got TP, plenty of gold, and want to go for a backdoor to the enemy's nexus, then you can buy this. Boot options. Sorcerer's Shoes. Your number one choice boots. Amazing synergy with his soldiers auto attacks and abilities in general. Mercury Treads only really viable against very heavy AP comps. Plated Steel Caps, again, only viable against all AD comps. You can still take Sorcerer's Shoes even if the last two situations are true, especially if you're the main damage dealer of your team. Ionian Boots, a great budget option if you need to desperately buy boots. Berserker Graves Mention, Sorcerer's Shoes are better for overall damage and Magic Pen is too important to skip. Plus you'll be getting plenty of attack speed from runes, items, and his abilities. Summoner Spells Flash, one of the best spells for Azir, whether it's to escape, chase, or outplay. You almost always want to take this unless you're playing top lane where there are exceptions. Check other roles for more info. Ignite, the spell to increase your kill potential early and throw out the game with true damage. The healing reduction will be necessary against some matchups, like Vlad and Silas, if you want any chance of killing them. Teleport, a safer spell in lanes will be heavily pushed or poked, with a guaranteed way to get to lane faster without falling behind on gold and experience. Also becomes a great way to join your team after 14 minutes with Unleash Teleport anytime you decide to split push. Cleanse, another defensive spell which is best against heavy CC teams. Exhaust, the anti-assassin burst spell. Barrier, a niche defensive spell against champs you aren't in range to exhaust. Counters Ignite, it can also make for some interesting bait plays under your tower. 
three six combos. Quick poke, W, Q, auto attack. Best to poke long range champs. Great to activate runes like Arcane Comment, Summon Airy, and First Strike. If you already have a soldier, no need to W. Quick trade, W, auto attack, Q, auto attack. Make sure to W close or on top of enemies. Dish out optimal damage in a short amount of time. Great with Electrocute. Get in more auto attacks at the beginning and or the end if enemies are still within your soldier range. Sharima Shuffle. W, E, Q. You need to Q before you arrive with E. This is more effective over walls as you can initially extend the distance with W. Use it to jump over multiple walls in certain areas. Great to chase, escape, and outplay. Main pre-6 all-in combo. W, auto attack, E, Q, auto attack. Aim to hit all abilities on enemies. They'll take damage from E and Q. Once you arrive, continue auto attacks and ignite if you're ready to kill. You'll be shielded to take some counter damage. As mentioned in abilities, E has a very long cooldown early on, so you should only be using this when you know where the enemy jungler is or you're confident you can kill your laner. You can ignore the first auto attack if enemies aren't within W range. Ultimate combos. Full ultimate combo. W, E, Q, R, W, auto attack. You'll be using E, Q to gap close, then R to sweep the enemy backwards. Place W soldier on top of the swept enemy. Continue with auto attacks from your soldiers. Use this combo on multiple enemies, sweeping them into your team. For the Sharima sweep. W, E, Q, Alt. This takes very careful timing. Your soldier needs to be next to or behind the enemy. Make sure to spam ultimate during a dash. This is incredibly hard to pull off in game, but you'll end up in a much safer place than the previous combo. You can even try this over walls. Flash combos. Flash ultimate. Simply flash then R to sweep a single enemy or multiple enemies into your team. This can be used at the end or during your other combos to close even more distance. Ultimate flash combo. W, E, Q, flash, ultimate, W, auto attack. So for example, we can use the full ultimate combo, then add flash before R to close even more distance. Some interactions worth noting. Azir's damage will come mostly from his soldier's auto attacks. However, sometimes enemies will be outside of your soldier range, but within your auto attack range. Remember to get in auto attacks since they do almost as much damage early game, especially in lane to add some extra poke against certain matchups. And of course during clutch fights. W tip. Your W placement can have huge impact depending on how the enemy moves. If enemies are chasing you, place it in front of them as they'll not have to walk through your soldier taking more auto attacks. If you're chasing them, place it ahead of enemies, either W or Q, so again you'll get in more auto attacks. This is important to keep in mind for laning, maybe to zone enemies from CS or in a teamfight. The double or more Q soldier problem. Although it may seem minuscule, there is a specific problem when you use Q and have two or more soldiers. The best way to describe this problem is that soldiers seem to get in each other's way and can randomly stop another soldier from reaching its maximum range. I've missed out on quite a few kills because of this issue. The only way to consistently avoid this is to have one soldier up at a time or aiming Q way beyond the target you're aiming for. Otherwise, it's all up to luck as to which soldier gets in the way. Not much you can do when you have two or more soldiers, but it's worth knowing it exists. Early game. Since Azir is only able to level W at level 1, he has a very weak invade potential, unless enemies stand on your soldiers the entire time. I wouldn't recommend invades most games, but you should use your soldiers over walls to scout for enemies who are trying to invade your team. This can save you from using a ward early on. In most lanes, you'll want to push waves with W, aiming to hit multiple minions with the AoE soldier damage, so you can get level 2 quicker. Look for quick trade combos on most enemy laners, or poke trade combos on others. You can look for harder trades at level 3, and even go for kills. Since you've most likely pushed in waves, be ready to escape any ganks with your E, so play closer to the opposite side the enemy jungler is most likely going to come from. Try to ward whichever side you think they'll come from, which again is the opposite side they started on. Get ready to join any skirmishes with your jungler, especially if they're invading or fighting for Scuttle Crab. Help take objectives like Drake when you can, as you deal plenty of consistent damage through soldiers' auto attacks. 
If you're really ahead and there's little to no jungler threat, look to poke or even dive enemy laners under tower. You can really snowball lanes when junglers aren't ganking you. Even if you do fall behind, the number one thing you need to focus on is just keeping up with levels and CS. You don't have to try and make plays all the time as just leveling will be enough for Azir. Roaming isn't exactly a CS strength, especially against mobile champs. However, if the enemy lacks vision through river, or you come from behind even over a wall and Shurima shuffle, you should look to sweep enemies back into your team. Best to try this only against immobile champs with no flash, or again you risk losing farm from mid and falling behind. Azir really does rely heavily on levels and items to stay strong. Look to push towers when you can and aim for three soldiers to double your attack speed. Look to transform any fallen towers using your sun disc passive and even go for plays using your Sharima's legacy passive and even go for plays against enemies who try to dive you. Mid game, as he has a range of options to play out the mid game. Look to siege and take the mid tower if it's still up. Use your Q poke and even go for sweet plays with a dive. Just make sure you have an escape plan or at least Sonya's ready. Making picks will be a great way to gain an advantage. Aim to E dash in and then R sweep enemies into your team or solo kill an immobile enemy squishy with a full combo. Take objectives and team fights around important areas like the river, jungle and epic monster pits. Azir with 2-3 items will do insane consistent damage, so you can even 2-3 mana baron if the opportunity arises. Grouping is your best bet as you'll usually need at least one champ to frontline or peel, so you can effectively output damage. If you've fallen behind, side laning is an option, however, you'll either need to have an escape route ready or have your sun disc tower constructed, using it as a safe zone. You might even look to bait enemies who force fights under your tower. Try to stay alive after any bad fights or if your team gets caught so you can wave clear, farm up and prolong the game to reach the late stages. Late game. Azir has insane scaling. You'll shred through anything at this point as long as you have death cap and void stuff. Grouping is essential for Azir and most of the mid game still applies. Look for sieges, objectives, make picks and team fights. Side laning won't be an option in most late games. You have incredible peel with your ultimate, so remember to use it to help your AD carry late game if you can save them. Look to sneak a 2 man baron with another damage dealer or you and a tank, preferably the jungler. Team fighting. Azir dominates team fights if he's allowed to auto attack constantly with his soldiers. This makes your W placement and Q reposition important to always try to predict how enemies will move or wait until they've used their dashes to reposition so soldiers are always positioned in their path. With medium to long range, look to Q-poke enemies before a fight even starts. With one or more enemies chunked, you'll give your team an early advantage. Enemy frontline and tanky champs will be your most likely first priority as they'll usually be the closest. However, you should always be ready to Sharima shuffle and then flash R any squishy backline enemies into your team, as he has high potential to surprise engage enemies bunched up. If enemies get too close, use E defensively to reposition even over walls to escape a major threat. You can play a lot more aggressively if you have flash, items like Zonyas, and especially if you have your ultimate ready to peel. Play soldiers in areas where enemies may walk through. It might zone them out completely or they risk taking some serious damage. If you're behind and have a fed carry, use your ultimate to peel for them. Be ready to chase and clean up fights with your E to gap close and Q to finish off low HP enemies. The Q slow will allow you and your team to catch up to most enemies. So you're interested in learning Azir, but aren't sure if he's worth investing time on. Let's first go over strengths, basically reasons you want to play Azir over other champions, then we'll cover weaknesses to consider, and I'll mention some quick solutions to counter them. Strengths. Insane consistent damage. His soldier damage is the key to success with Azir. While Q, E and Ultimate have potential to pop some squishes with a combo, any enemies standing on a single or multiple enemies will keep taking damage. Add items and levels and you'll start to shred and pop anything that stands within your soldier's range. Mobile for a mage. With an EQ dash, you'll be able to escape most situations or chase down even the most mobile champs. This is extremely rare in mages with this much consistent damage and poke range. Strong lane bully. Against most matchups, you'll have the upper hand. Take advantage of the strength early on and you'll reap the rewards later on. Solid team fighting. As long as there is some kind of peel or tankiness in your team, 
Azir will output plenty of consistent damage as already mentioned, plus the potential to poke from long range and even poses as an engaged threat with his Shurima Shuffle sweep on any vulnerable enemies. Amazing scaling. Once he reaches late game with a full build and levels, he'll shred through anything that stands within his soldier range. This is also a reminder that no matter how the game is going, whether your team is really far behind, remember always to stick it through to the end with Azir, as your true power spike is just around the corner and your time to dominate will come. Weaknesses. Weak when behind. If you ever fall behind, you'll be close to useless as your damage will be minimized. Your ultimate is the only thing that will keep you relevant if you fall behind. This is why it's extremely important to stay ahead or even in levels in gold. Luckily, Azir has a strong laning phase in most matchups. You'll need to push and pressure laners to abuse your strength early on while having E ready to dash out to safety anytime you're ganked. Practice escapes in normals by pushing your limits. You'll be surprised how much you can get away with. Learn some double wall escapes around the river and jungle. Very few enemies will be able to catch you. Don't roam unless you've pushed your waves in and there's a high chance against immobile enemies that you'll kill or you risk falling behind. Even look to take enemy jungler's farm when possible to speed up your level and item power spikes. Lacks burst and CC. Compared to other mages out there, he lacks that critical burst that instantly wipes out enemies and reliable CC from range. Even if Azir performs a full combo and one shots a squishy, you'll most likely have to get quite close and use your dash aggressively, leaving you in a vulnerable position. Your goal should be to chunk enemies and only dash in when it's safe to do so. Your only form of reliable CC is your ultimate, and that's only useful against champions that are close to you. Relies on a frontline. Azir does have decent peel with ultimate and escape potential with his E. However, against multiple threats, this won't be enough. To truly utilize Azir's damage, he'll need at least one tank or CC utility type champion to help further peel enemies. Make sure to fight and position safely behind any of the tanks on your team. Play around these champions that will allow you to safely output damage. Keep an eye on enemy dashes and blinks before you commit. If they use their gap closers on another target, now is your time to go in and dish out damage safely. Hard to master. This isn't to say Azir is the hardest champion to play, he's just extremely unique compared to other champs. Having to micromanage multiple soldiers during a teamfight while two to three threats are close by can be hard at first to figure out your priorities. This weakness is simply solved with practice and time. It can almost feel like you're controlling four champions when you have three or more soldiers activated, attacking anything that moves within range. You'll also have to reposition them with Q, again, adding to the list of priorities. Most other champions will simply throw out abilities and that's the last time they have to think about it before it's off cooldown. Azir still has so much to do once his Q is thrown out, like how it's positioned, is it safe enough to auto attack without getting too close, etc. Subject to nerfs. This is something I faced in the past. Back in Season 5 when I first reached Diamond with Azir, I was steadily climbing through Diamond 5, 4 and 3. Then the nerf came and lowered his range and damage numbers. At that point I even switched to Malzahar because it was much easier to win games with such little effort compared to Azir, with even my best games I struggled to make an impact. These nerfs have happened quite regularly since then, any time Azir starts to increase in win rate. Once Azir is strong, he becomes too powerful in the right hands. His commanding lane pressure is too obnoxious for players to deal with and therefore falls under Riot's radar. There's no real solution to this other than to have another champion ready to climb with or continue playing Azir anyway. Good luck. Top lane. Most tips from this guide can be applied, but let's cover specific tips for top lane. Just like mid lane, Conqueror is an optimal rune if you want consistent damage and some sustain, which is probably best against most top laners. Otherwise, if they're squishy and mobile, for example a vein top, take summon airy or electrocute for the harder trades and quick burst poke. Teleport is best taken as your second summoner spell for the safety it provides to come back to recover from any bad trades or deaths as well as the global pressure it has. Unleash teleport after 14 minutes will become critical when it comes to joining fights while you're side laning. You can even take a TP over flash if you don't feel the need for flash. Ignite with teleport will be important to pressure champs that need to be pressured early, like Trindamir or Jax, who will scale insanely if they're not dealt with early. Teleport exhaust is another option against hard engaged champs, maybe something like Aurelia or Aatrox. 
Azir has much easier time versus melee matchups, as they're much easier to harass and auto attack with your soldiers. Lanes, however, will be way more punishing, and you only have your E to get away from ganks, and after 6, your ultimate for peel. Try to freeze next to your tower, or at least in the middle of the lane when possible. You'll also be a target for dives. Again, you'll need to rely on kiting, wave clearing, and peel to survive. If you're able to constantly chunk enemies to at least half HP, they will think twice about diving you or risk dying themselves. Look to join skirmishes with your jungler when possible. Try to chain CC with your junglers, as your timing can also mess up their combos, since your teammates may not know which way you're going to sweep them with your ult. Take Herald with your jungler when there's an opening. You can look to teleport to Dragon if the enemy top laner has also teleported down and you are confident you can win the fight. Otherwise, ping your teammates back and just take tower platings. An early Dragon is not worth risking the loss of multiple waves and tower platings. Azir was the first champion in League that I felt I could finally call my main. However, with the numerous bugs on his release, mixed with constant changes and nerfs to his kit, he has always been a victim to pro play, where he would be too strong of a pick. His unique kit means he'll always have that very fine balance between being too overpowered and very lackluster. Right now, I honestly think he's in a good spot, but not overpowered. He feels quite strong in the right hands, so practice and master his early laning phase, pushing your limits the first few times, then using that strong lead to take you through mid game and ultimately late game. If you like this guide, then you'll love my Victor or Swain guide. Both are control mages who can really dominate and take over teamfights. Or check out all my other ultimate guides for Season 13. Let me know if there's a champion you want to see in the next video, just let me know in the comments below. I'm Zeus, good luck in your ranked games, and I'll see you in the next video.